Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be discussing trauma bonding. Trauma bonding is a type of relationship that most people believe that is love. And that's why it becomes so difficult for people to leave when they're in a relationship with abusers or narcissists or they're just overall very unhappy and don't get treated right. And when they talk about it to their family and friends, they just turn around and say to them, why don't you just leave? You know he's bad, we know he's bad, or she's bad, she's terrible to you. Like, it's very obvious for you to see and everybody else to see. So why don't you just leave them? What's the problem? And that's what people don't seem to realize that when, it's, when a relationship is based on a trauma bond, it's very, very difficult to break that bond. It's actually more difficult because it, you, you can fall out of love with someone, but you can still be attached in that bond. So you may not necessarily love that person or even like them, yet you're stuck in this circle of a trauma bond. Whereas when you're in a relationship that's healthy and has love, if you fall out of love or you want to move on, that's more doable. Because trauma bonding has a emotional, psychological, plus a biological effect on you as the person who's in it. So that's why it's even harder to break out of a trauma bond relationship than a healthier, loving relationship. And I'll explain to you guys what trauma bonding is and the signs to look out for so that you understand whether you're genuinely in a relationship that it's good for you and it's healthy and you're in love or that you're dealing with someone who you've bonded with under trauma and that's what you're addicted to now. And that's what you think normal love is supposed to be. A trauma bond stands for inconsistent reinforcement of love. So when someone is continuously inconsistent with us, we're thrown off balance. We can't find our feet and we don't know what's going on. So it goes from like a stage of complete love bombing. Someone is, a, they adore you. They're showering you with love and affection and attention. And then it goes to a phase of complete devaluation. So you're invalidated, you don't mean anything, you're insulted, you're put down, you're useless. And then it goes back to love bombing. And it's this cycle, it's up and down, and it's like that continuously. And this stems from dealing with narcissists or with people who are abusers in our childhood. So if you have a parent that has certain traits or they were quite emotionally abusive, then you're probably very susceptible to um, this sort of relationship um, because that's what you're used to. To you, trauma bond is what love is. So when you get into a healthy, loving relationship and it's all very steady and it's all very one level and quiet and sort of stable, to you, that's not love because you miss that drama and that excitement and that emotional roller coaster and up and down. But that's because to you, you now classify trauma bonding as love. And when it's a healthy, stable, secure love, that, that's not enough excitement for you because you've already experienced that and you believe that is, that's how you've been socialized to believe what love is when you were brought up. So now when you look for partners, that is the quality that stands out to you the most or you feel the most love in. What we define as love and that craving that we get from the emotional up and down, that hit of excitement, that intensity, then nobody else fulfills that gap for us unless it's that person that's giving us this emotional abuse. So to you, it may seem that it's a natu completely natural love reaction, but really what it is when it's so inconsistent and so volatile is that you're just addicted. It's a chemical an emotional reaction that your brain and your body have become accustomed to and used to. And if you don't get that, and you don't satisfy your craving of love. And what's incredibly difficult about these types of relationships is that when, it's, when it comes to an end and the abuser finally decides to just drop you and let you go, you are left completely depleted, devastated and broken. Because you're so used to the cycle of up and down from love bombing to invalidation, to love bombing again. But when you, when they leave and you're broken, you're so desperate to get that hit again. You're so desperate to get that high again, that chemical reaction in your brain again, that you feel like the only person 
your craving for love and affection comes from that abuser. So the only person that could really give you back that love and give you back that hit is that abuser. So you constantly end up going back to them or trying to hold a spot for them in your life because they're the only person that evokes this emotion in you. And to you, you feel like, I'm so heartbroken, I love them so much, you know, this is why I'm so hurt, this is why I'm so broken and I can't get over the relationship. But really, what you think that you're missing, what you think that you are, you know, craving and that you miss in your life and that's why you're heartbroken, it's not actually love, but it's that chemical reaction, both in your body and brain, that that person provides for you. So that's what you really miss and that's what you really want back in your life. And that's why you feel so broken because that hit, that up, is no longer coming up for you. I also just want to emphasize that when I say an abuser, that doesn't mean that the person has to hit you, kick you, punch you. Abuse could be verbal, could be emotional, could be financial, could even be digital. If they're constantly looking at your social media profiles and you don't have privacy, that's a form of abuse. So I just wanted to clarify that when I say when you're in a relationship with an abuser, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're in a relationship with someone who's domestically violent or who is physically abusive. There are so many different types of abuse. I've got a video on abuse, which I'm going to link for you guys, or I'm going to post it on my YouTube channel soon. It's over on my Instagram TV at the moment, which I define different types of abuse. So it's important to understand that every time I reference abuse, I don't necessarily only mean physical abuse. It's mental, emotional, financial, like I said, a whole heaps of things fall under some sort of abuse if it's consistent and it's a pattern and it's happening to you and it makes you feel unhappy. That's abuse. So how do we know that we're in a trauma bond? The first thing to do is to take a step back and look out for the pattern. Is it an inconsistent pattern? Do you have extreme highs and extreme lows? If there's a lot of inconsistency in the relationship and it's a lot of ups and downs, then most likely this is based on a trauma bond than a love relationship. And the second thing is that if you really take a step back and you think about how you feel about the person, you will actually realize that you don't necessarily like certain things about them. And they're quite a lot. Things like their personality traits, maybe you've lost respect for them because of the continuous abuse that they've given you. Maybe you just don't think that they're necessarily a good person to other people. It's like when you're in a restaurant and you notice your partner being very rude or disrespectful to the waiter. It's when you think, oh, hold on, this is not good. Like, there is something that's not right. So if you're beginning to see a lot of things like that, and yet you're still with them, and you can't seem to bring yourself away or tear yourself away from them, and it's just the thought of not being with them is impossible for you, but you know all the things that you dislike, or all the things that necessarily you don't get along with or accept, and you're sticking around, then chances are that you're more likely in a trauma-bonded relationship. So the important thing is for us to understand how to break out of them, because they are actually, like I said before, way harder to break out of than a love relationship. So how do we do it? So breaking a bond with an abuser doesn't come easy, and it will take steps and a lot of work from you, your side. And the first thing to do is to be very clear about what's going on in this relationship because what happens is when you go through a breakup or some time apart you begin to get abuse amnesia you forget the abusive parts you only think of the good parts you only because your brain is so desperate for that chemical reaction and that release it will try and trick you into believing that things were much better than that what they actually were so you start holding on to the hope and the good parts because it's your body working against your mind. And that's why it's so hard. So being clear is so important and understand that no, these things are abusive and I am keep going back to this person and I keep making excuses for their behavior, but wrong is wrong. And it's in my hands to put my foot down and put a break to it. So it's being clear. The second thing is as I just said, what happens is when you're in an abusive relationship and you don't realize it or you don't want to accept that you are, is the denial that really messes people up. Because what happens is that you stay with someone 
because of the potential they hold, not their reality. So you always constantly hoping that they would become the person you want them to become instead of looking at what's right in front of you and who they really are because they're showing you who they are and you're hoping that you could mold them into something that they're not. And 99% of the time, that does not work out how you think you will. So you need to not live in denial and live in your reality. You need to be, be able to see that when some other people are telling you, your close friends are telling you things about this person, they're doing it out of a place of care. If you trust these people around you, then you would listen to them when it comes to making probably any other decision. So why is it that you're justifying the actions of this individual in your life, of this abuser? And not even when you, when you're while you're in the relationship, you tend to stick up for them and justify their actions even post the relationship, even after when someone turns around and says to you, oh, I remember you dating so-and-so and they were so terrible to you. Like, no, but you know, I did this and I did that and that's why we ended up, you know, he only reacted to because of what happened in his past. You try and justify that for them because you're denying that you've been abused. It's never easy to accept that, but the longer you live in denial, the, the longer you're prolonging your healing process because you haven't accepted what's been happening to you. And if you don't accept it, you can't heal it. So start living in reality and see what's going on around you. Words are very easy to say. It doesn't matter if they say nice things to you. It doesn't matter if they show you affection once in a while. It doesn't matter if they buy you nice things. Every time they come back and miss you, the thing is that they are also craving the same hit as you. They also rely on this emotional roller coaster. They also need it as much as you do. So maybe the times that you decide to cut this person off and they come running back and it's like, I miss you, I want you, I love you, come back to me, I promise I've changed. That change is very temporary. They're also craving the same hit as you. So it depends who can stay stronger and who's the weaker one that will give in. So it's important, so important, I can't even emphasize that if you decide to cut off the abuser, my advice to you would be to have the no contact rule because you know your brain's already playing games with you, you know that you could have a moment of weakness and you know that that person also is craving the same hit as you. So somewhere, someone, if you guys both want that same chemical reaction and the craving is there from both sides, then it's going to happen at some point. And if you want to put a stop to this cycle of abuse, to the cycle of trauma bonding and be in a healthy, happy, stable, loving relationship, you've got to put your foot down and break the cycle. And you've got to stop this pattern. So the best thing to do for you, my advice, is to not be in touch. Because like someone who's quitting cigarettes, for example, for them to be around in a room full of smokers, it's very easy to relapse into that craving. But if they're in an environment where there is no cigarettes in sight, no smell, no taste, nothing, then it's more easier for them to let it go and start healing and getting over that addiction. So it's the same theory here. The more you're addicted and the more you hold on to that, the more you're feeding the addiction. You're not healing it, you're not fixing it. It's a lot easier for us to be able to navigate our feelings and emotions if we're aware of what's going on. Or what situation we're in and in the long run when you do decide to cut this person off and you have gone through a stage of no contact and you feel like the dust has settled and maybe it's time that you should reach out and speak to them and just make sure that everything is resolved and everything's civil pull yourself back from the situation take a step back and have a think about is this in my best interest does this serve me in the grand scheme of things? Now that I've come such a long way to let go of that addiction and of that hate, do I now really want to put myself back in that environment, have probably a short-lived satisfaction of seeing that person, speaking to them, whatever, but then when you pull yourself back away, is it really worth you possibly falling under that trap again? Does it really serve you anything? And if that person is a narcissist, and you know that they're unable to change and they will never see things from a different perspective, does it really matter what they think of you? Because you already know their opinion of you and that's not going to budge. And you are the last person who would tell them what to think of you because 
they've already made you feel like you're replaceable, you don't mean anything, your words, your thoughts, your feelings don't mean anything. So what makes you think that now you go back and you try and give them a different, you give them a closure or a different explanation that they will accept that and walk away from there on the same page as you. If that was the case, the relationship would have worked out in the first place. It's clearly that you guys see things so different that even now you've had some time away. So what happens is that, like I said, it, you get abuse amnesia, that we hold on to the best memories and our brain tricks us into forgetting all the bad ones. But once you're back in that environment and you try and convince this person otherwise, you will be reminded of exactly why things ended in the first place. Because their reactions, they are not going to change. You may have come a long way and see things differently, but someone who's got these traits, they don't just wake up one day and are a different person. They lack empathy and you cannot teach that to them. Breaking out of a trauma bond is extremely difficult because you've given so much of yourself in the relationship, you've committed so much time, effort and attention and affection that it's very hard and takes immense amounts of self-control, commitment, consistency on your behalf for you to be able to break out of this bond. Because it's taken such a long time to build, it's going to take just as much time to break. But it is necessary for you to break those bonds because you need to, in order for you to be able to get to a happy, healthy, love-based relationship, you have to break out of the cycle of meeting, being receptive, being accepting of these trauma bonding types of relationships. And I can't emphasize enough how important it is for you to have a good support system because the abuser tends to break you down and isolate you. That's the only way they can practice their abuse on you. So when you are, have made a decision to walk away from an abusive relationship, it's very, very important for you to seek support and have your people or a counselor or a therapist or a coach, anything that you feel comfortable to give you that support and that guidance that you need. And, and you know, it's, it, there's nothing wrong with asking for help. There's nothing wrong with something that you can't cope with because you've been abused and you are the victim and you do need help and that's okay to feel like that. So I really hope that this has helped you guys understand different types of relationship and whether you're in a trauma bond or a love happy relationship. And if you are in a trauma bond, the good news is that you can break it. It's not forever. As soon as you realize, as long as you're aware of it and you're working on yourself and tactics to get out of that trauma bond, then you will get there. It's, it's doable. People have done it before. And all you have to do, the decision lies in you. So as soon as you're ready to make that decision and take the necessary steps, it will happen. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that this has shined some light into some difficult situations for you and has helped you understand the dynamics of your relationship. Please subscribe to my channel, like and comment on this video, and I will see you guys here again soon with another hot topic. Um, and if you have any suggestions, please write them in the comments below. I'd love to know if there's anything you would want me to cover. I'll see you guys again here soon. Mwah.